Hey guys, welcome back to another one. Today we'll be going over 10 more tips for this upcoming trapping season. If you guys have your own tips or about anything related to trapping, leave them down in the comment section down below. All of these trips come from trapperman.com, which is an online forum where trappers discuss all things trapping. Feel free to check them out. They are not a sponsor of the channel, but are a great resource which we want to support and promote. A link will be down below if you are interested in it. As always, the, not all these tips will pertain to everybody, so be sure to check your state's regulations to confirm whether you can or cannot do it. This first tip is provided by Joe Barbie. When trapping in ice and snow, traps tend to freeze down. Use Ziploc bags and put your trap set in and seal it. The next tip is provided by Gary Mather, and this is for lure holders. I use sections of bamboo. It is tough and you can drive it into the ground. Just cut it off above and below the joint, sharpen to the end, and put wool or cotton in the end. You can put fur in the end for sight appeal. Works great at caster mound sets. You can pre-lure and cut them at any length. In frozen ground, you can drive a rebar stake in the ground to get the hole started and then put in that bamboo. And then you can pick them up and reuse them. Basic flat slash urine post set. While there are more variations to the flat set than there are to the dirt hole, I try to come up with a general flat set that is generic in nature. Again, location is the most important aspect of any set. If the animals do not travel close enough to notice the set, it won't matter how well the set is constructed. A flat set is nothing more than a set using an object above the ground rather than a hole to apply scent and attract the animal. The object could be a rock, piece of sod, piece of wood, a bone, a piece of charred wood, etc. If one of these objects don't already exist in a good location, you can easily put one where you'd like to construct the set. It is good to position the set where the object will stand out in contrast to the immediate area. When you position the object to be used in a flat set, keep in mind how you want the animal to approach the set. Using existing backing material at the site, you can position the set so the animal will travel over to the trap and reach the scented object. The target animal will dictate how far back the trap will be from the object. Of course, foxes will require the trap to be positioned closer to the object than a coyote because of the difference in the length of their legs. Each flat set is different and each set has its own problems and peculiar things about it that governs how far from the post the position must be for the trap. The best thing to do is to look where your target animal will step and set the trap there. This is one of those learning things that will require you to be observant of, of where a missed animal has stepped and that you can feel exactly where the trap should be placed over time. You should bed your trap solidly just like a dirt hole set. Usually using good gland lure or urine works best at these sets. Before I would make a flat set with both gland lure and urine, I'd make two separate flat sets from 5 to 30 steps apart and use gland lure only on one and urine only on the other. Having two sets that smell differently doubles your chances at any given location. There are not target animals that can get into one, leaving the other one still operating. Quite often, fox and coyotes will travel in pairs. Having two or more sets at a good location gives you a chance for a double catch. Double catches are more common in the fall and winter than in the spring and summer months. This is just a basic description of a flat slash year and post set. There is much more that can be learned about flat sets. You can learn more by getting the book by Charles Dobbins, Variations of the Flat Set. If you guys enjoy these types of videos, hit that like and subscribe button. It helps us know that you enjoy these and helps us create more of them for you. Next up, we have learning. Take advantage of all the written material and videos that you can get your hands on. That fire in the belly to learn all that you can about this sport will serve you well and will be reflected in your catches. There is lots of sources of information. There is the Trapper Man Forum, the Trapper and Predator Collar Magazine, Fur Fish Game Magazine, hundreds of books on the market and many videos. And if you find a veteran trapper in your area that will take you under his or her wing, you will really shorten your learning curve also. Record Keeping 
Keep a record of different types of sets, lures, and baits that you tried during the course of the trapping season. This will enable you to review what you've done and give you a very good record of what worked for you. Set locations. Locations might not look the same in different parts of the country. Farmland where there are a lot of row crops will seem somewhat different than the rolling prairies of the Dakotas. Woodland areas will also seem somewhat different when it comes to setting set locations. Set locations for snares will differ also. There are common threads that will be evident of the set locations of different terrains. These common threads is where the canine travels to hunt and where the canine will travel just to get from one place to another. For hunting, remember edges. Just like the edges of fields and where edges intersect is best like where a bean field, cornfield, and pasture connect. Just for ease of travel, look for saddles and the ridges as an example. Lure holders. I was taught at an early age that it's a no-no to apply lure directly on the ground. The ground tends to absorb the lure's odor rapidly, which deadens the odor. To, re to prevent this, I put lure on or in something that way the odors can travel freely in the air. I know there's a variety of lure holders being used by trappers, so give us a tip of what you'd like to use. For water trapping, I like to find a hollow stem dead weed. These are usually abundant along most these are usually abundant along most creeks. I break off the stem, which is about a diameter of a pencil, and shove the hollow stem into my lure bottle. This crams the lure into the hollow cavity of the wood stem, and then I push the other end of the stem into the ground or into the pocket set, and there's the natural lure holder. It's off the ground and has a reservoir of lure in the hollow stem that would keep emitting odor. For dirt holes, I like to wad up a bunch of dead grass in the hole as my lure holder. This will also give the canine something to try to pull out of the hole, since it seems to be obstructing its view of the bottom of the hole. While he's trying to get this grass wad out of the hole, it's moving its feet around, which is increasing my chances of a catch. Bobcat Appeal when trapping bobcats, use a visual aid to help get your, your set location. When trapping bobcats, use a visual aid to help get it to your trap location. The bobcat depends on its eyesight a great deal when hunting and this can be taken advantage of. First I'd like to get a good location for a set, then I find a lone branch where I can hang my attractor from and put the set fairly close to the visual attractor. I wanted to hang the tractor where it would be visible to the bobcat from the furthest distance. I have used bird wings where legal. I use monofilament fishing line and hang it so that wind will blow it around without it getting tangled by a nearby branch. With this type set up, the slightest breeze will cause the wing to move in it, and that's all it takes to get the cat's attention. In areas where it's illegal to use parts of animal for bait, a tape from a cassette works very well also. Just tie it to the branch and let it drape down from the limb. Cats can't resist checking these out. Mink sets and spring runs and springs are productive mink locations. The mink will visit these places at all times of the year because there there are crocodags, frogs, salamanders living in the silt and mud. At these locations the reptiles will be hibernating in the winter. These springs are not likely to freeze in the coldest weather. Pockets, other holes, or cubbies can be created to pay off at this location. We also open up our merch shop and have very cool designs and apparel to choose from, so be sure to give that a look down at the below the video. Last up, we got side appeal for beavers. When using visual attractors for beavers, either with or without lure, my favorite is a piece of maple about as big around as your thumb and 8 to 10 inches long. I like to take a couple of these and remove all the bark so they are very white when looking and they show up well against the mud bank or by a water line. I will also take the rest of the limb that I removed these peel sticks from and lay it on a trail leading to the water. I will either use an existing trail or make one myself. The reason I like to use maple is because it stays nice and bright for days when the bark is removed. So many other varieties will turn dark and look old in a matter of hours. Thank you for watching this video of outdoor experiences. We'll catch you on the next one.